my ghosts on this episode of demons row tv we bring your boy big cash back out of retirement and we talk about going from a crib to a motorcycle club and we get into it on this episode of demons row tv no yeah we ghosting baby Welcome to Demons Row TV, the holy grail of MC culture, where we cover everything motorcycle club involved. I'm Sos the Ghost, I'm your host for the evening, and today we're gonna talk about transitioning from gang life into MC life, from a crip to a motorcycle club. Now, check out the last episode that I did. It's called From a Crip to a One Percenter. I'ma link that down, y'all check that out. I gave my account the East Side Story, the New York version of it. So it's only right if we're gonna talk about Crip, we're gonna go to the roots and we're gonna talk about Cali and we're gonna get the boy Big Cas. But the first thing I want you to do, like we always do on this channel, is to hit me with that pound ghosting. And that lets me know you're alive and well, sitting on tools, doing what you do, or just part of the Demon's Row community. One of my ghosts. Shout to all my new subscribers. Welcome to the row. Follow the Sos the Ghost page. We're gonna go live within the next week or so. I'm tired of saying it, we are gonna get right to it. Just hit me in the comments and let me know a good day. We're gonna keep the Wednesday flowing with the regular video and then we're gonna do another extra day and we're gonna come with that live so we can really chop and really grow this community. Also, Shout to everybody that's been supporting the Demons Row clothing. Y'all are the best. I've been posting a lot of pictures. And I'm going to start posting on the YouTube too. Just to show y'all love for the support y'all give me. Things are going so good. And they got something going now where the champion logo is going to be put on the Demons Row clothing. So y'all check out for that. That's coming in the near future already. All the paperwork is in. Teespring has partnered up with Champion and certain people have hit levels where they can do it. So your boy is really blessed, but let's get into it. The homie Big Cas breaks it down from a crip to a motorcycle club. Let's get into it. So one of the biggest misconceptions is leaving the streets and transitioning over to the motorcycle world. And some people were like, oh, is it the same? You know, law enforcement, see motorcycle clubs as gangs. Um, so let me start by, my name is Guillermo Big Cassilan. A lot of you may know me from uh, different interviews I've done, documentary I did, um, Life of One Percenter. Um, and I've always been asked, um, is there a difference from the streets to the motorcycle world? And there's two different answers. No, there's no different if you haven't changed. If you bring that street element into the motorcycle world, then you're going to deal with people accordingly and they're going to, you know, respond to you accordingly. Um, the second answer would be, Yes, it could be a huge difference if you don't bring that street element. You know, what we did in the streets, there was no real reward. You know, there was no reward whatsoever. The reward was repping a block that we're never going to see a paycheck for. Um, you know, it was retaliating on an enemy 
And there's no paycheck at the end of that, you know. But we wholeheartedly believed in that. We wholeheartedly believed we were doing something for our neighborhood. You know, we were at war. Um, you know, and being of a, a different racial background, you know, spending my whole life in what is predominantly, you know, an African-American gang, and I was of a different race, I made sure I fit in accordingly. There's really not much of a difference even in the motorcycle world because race plays a part in the motorcycle world too. Sadly, you know, you evolve and hopefully it will continue to evolve. But, you know, you, you wanted to wholeheartedly, like I said, believe that what you were doing in the streets was for something, you know, and the peer pressures of, man, you gotta, you gotta put in for the hood. You know, you have to do it for the hood. And it didn't matter what nationality you, you were. If you were from a gang, then it was, you had to put in for the hood. You had to put in work, you know, <clears throat> you had to earn your stripes. And at my age now where I look back and I, I, I'm never going to get a social security check. I'm never going to get a retirement check. I'm not going to get a watch for 50 years. Instead, I, you know, I can get somebody to go on the internet and go, oh man, he's a weirdo. Uh, he ain't from the hood or he, do you really think at 52 years of age, I care if you care to validate me if I'm from a neighborhood or not? That's where transitioning into the motorcycle world starts. Because when you leave that behind, when you completely, listen to me, when you completely leave that behind and your only thought is to be free and look at the brother riding next to you, look at the brothers riding behind you, or just look in the mirror and realize you're riding by yourself, you're free. You're free. All the open space in the world, you're free. And law enforcement will do everything in their power to tag you in as a gangbanger, as a gangster, as an organized crime. Well, in the streets, we put in work for a block or a rag or a street number or a name. In the motorcycle world, we put on miles. We put on miles. And when I was asked to do this by my brother, you know, I, I, I had trouble. For, I mean, for months, we've tried to put something together. And I thought, how can I break this down in layman's term that, again, there's two answers. If you bring that street bullshit into the motorcycle world, you're going to get the same results. If you completely transition Real dear brother of mine, I won't say his name, but he, he saw something, he saw a post about me and I responded to it and he said, man, that shit is in the past. Leave that shit alone. Don't nobody care about that, man. You belong to something different now. You know, that's just it. You have to know when you're done with something. I rode this weekend and I felt like it was my first day of school, waking up to go, man, which pair of jeans am I gonna put on? Uh, which boots am I gonna put on? You know, how's my cut gonna look? Cause I know that I was about to clear three different cities in the same state to ride with my brothers to go meet up with some more brothers. See, as a gangbanger, we did the same thing. Make sure my khakis is creased. Make sure my neck kickers is right. Make sure my Kroger sacks. And have you that may go in here and troll, don't even know what nip kickers are, don't know what wallabies are, don't know what croaker sacks are. Instead, you're a keyboard thug and you're going to type some silly shit knowing there ain't no way in the world you're going to ever walk up on me and say anything negative. But you'll type away. That's the difference that I don't bring into the motorcycle world anymore. Because what you say or do don't stop me from eating a living. And when I get on that motorcycle and I get excited to see my brothers, it's a different passion. And did I get some blowback when I, you know, really took this motorcycle thing serious? Um, yeah. You know, I, I joined a club that was of a whole predominantly different color than what 
I represent him. And I literally, when I tell you, I got zero, absolutely zero support from this neighborhood that I was from. I felt like I had to balance it out. Like, man, I'm still, you know, I'm still from that. But at some point you realize that shit is behind me. I'm on a motorcycle flapping that fucking throttle and I can go anywhere I want. When I'm in the hood, I got to worry about, you know, is the, the enemy going to get me? You know, is the cops going to get me? Uh, am I going to get, you know, tossed up in some bullshit? And look, there's enemies in the motorcycle world. But if you're looking for an answer of leaving the streets behind and taking this motorcycle shit serious, let me tell you a story. I was in Idaho. I pulled into a Harley Davidson dealership to get some work done. And an old white dude walked up to me and he went to touch my patch of the previous club I was in. And I, you know, popped his hand. And he's like, man, I made that diamond. So you make that diamond? So and so made that diamond. And he said, nah, man, I'm so and so that made that diamond. So I immediately got on the phone to check his pedigree. I handed the phone to the person I called, man. The tears started flowing, the admiration, the excitement. And it turned out he was a white boy that was in the club I was in. And he got all kinds of flack from his people joining a predominantly black motorcycle club. And then he left that club and became a president of another all white, you know, outlaw club. And he was president of that club. And I said, well, now you're just in a vet's club. Why is that? He said, one, I got tired of worrying if I had enough bail money. And I got tired of knowing that, fuck, I can't just ride my motorcycle free. You know, if there's any message I can say to some young dude that's joining an outlaw club that maybe didn't even come from the streets, but he wants to accrue his brother's enemies and say, well, man, you know, fuck that club and fuck that dude and fuck. What did that person ever do to you? Because you might as well go ahead and gangbang. You might as well have just gone ahead and gangbang because if you're going to accrue somebody like, man, I'm a, your enemy's my enemy. I'm sorry, man. I get down where I'm mad at and somebody put their hands on one of my brothers. I got you. But I'm not going to fight your battle over some shit 30 years ago that I had nothing to do with because you're not going to fight mine. Now, that may not be the politically correct answer, but I hope that calmer heads will say, well, it's just like gangbanging. How do we tell a dude to leave the streets alone and then come over to this motorcycle world and do the same thing where he's risking his freedom? He's risking his livelihood. He's not going to kiss his wife and kids or his woman or anybody or his brothers. Because as I always say, as I always say, can't take your motorcycle to jail or to the grave. It'd be dope if you could. And ain't shit up in jail but some faggots. Ain't no bitches up in there to, to you know, wet your whistle. So if you're going to leave the streets alone and come to this motorcycle world, do just that. Leave the streets alone alone because here's where I'm going to flip this when you're on your motorcycle guess what you're doing in the streets you're alone you're riding on your motorcycle alone so respect those streets you know understand that that freedom can be taken away from you you know to go from gangbanging to, you know, people that know me, to go from gangbanging to the entertainment world, I always had a motorcycle. I always. But it took me many years because I treated the motorcycle club like I treated the streets. You know, my wife would tell you today, my, my whole mindset was, nah, it's my club first. Don't question me. Don't ask me. Don't dictate. Don't. Double talk me nothing. It was my club. 
Well, guess who you call when you need bail money? Guess who you call when your bike is on the side of the road? Because if they're detaining you, they're probably detaining everybody else. So through and through, if you're going to leave the streets alone, embrace the motorcycle culture through and through. And there's only one thing to that. Ride your motorcycle. Embrace it with your brothers. Don't, don't bring that bullshit over into this because you're going to get an answer that you would have got when you was gangbanging. You know, I'm never going to get caught up in, man, fuck that other side because, again, if I left gangbanging and those people are my enemy no more, why am I going to create new enemies? Now, you put your hands on me or you put your hands on one of my brothers, I'm going to make sure your child knows that I broke your fucking face by any means necessary. And I am someone that, man, I got ridiculed and trolled and I got wore out, wore out on the Internet. But let me tell you what never stopped. Nobody ever stopped me from riding my motorcycle. Nobody has ever walked up to Big Cass and went, man, you are never. Because I earned that respect. And if you think that you might want to do that, you might think twice, ah, oh, man, this, this dude don't hide. I love the motorcycle world. I love the outlaw world. You know, and I'm speaking for me. I'm not speaking for the club I ride with, the nation. I, I'm speaking for me. Leave that street shit behind. You bring it over to the motorcycle world, you don't get the same answers. You know, you don't get the same outcome. You know, I look back and I think, when I put on my cut, it's not the rag I used to put in my pocket. You know, I'm not about to put on for the set. When I put my cut on, I wish I could sleep in that thing every goddamn day. I wish I could wake up in it every day. But I got to pay bills and I got to get out. But it's a feeling that I could never explain until you understand that you got to completely cross over. You know, I love what this show is doing. I love the topics that it shows on, you know, that it touches on. And just know... If your homies ain't going to support you, just know when you hit that and you brap your ass off the, off the street, they still sitting there on the porch hating on you. People in your club want you to do something that's not politically correct for where your life is today, where you paying bills and you going to work and, you know, you prospecting for that club not to go catch a case. You prospected to be a brother of a nation, of a family. When I hear cats like, cats, brother, I'll die for you. You know my my immediate response is? Yeah, don't do that. Live for me. Live with me. Doing it through, ride with me. My ghosts, we back. Let me know in the comments what you think about the homie Big Cass. Everything he had to say. Let me know if y'all are in gangs thinking about transitioning to MC life or you was in a gang and transitioned to this thing of ours like I did. It did a lot for me. It helped me calm down as a person. I was the type of person that was antisocial. I was snapped for anything. Now I have a lot more. You know, like I still have that New York in me and at times I have to brace it, but I'm a lot more social. As you can see, I'm on social media, you know what I'm saying, on YouTube. And you would think that I'm not really the introvert type, but really that's the type of person I am, really and truly more to myself. Doing the show, having this connection with the camera and with all of y'all is a blessing. So I just wanna thank y'all for all the support y'all give. Follow us on Instagram, at Demons Row, at Ghost underscore. Get that Demons Row merch. Look fresh for the summer when you on your tools. And thank you for tuning in to Demons Row TV, the holy grail of MC culture. Like, subscribe, and comment. And let them know that Demons Row is here to save everybody, to forget all that nut shit. No, yeah, we ghosting, baby.